Hey photographers, you want your videos to look more professional and more like the images that you see in movies. Now with the Fuji X-H1's ability to shoot at 24 frames in the 4K 17 by 9 cinema aspect ratio, using a shutter speed of 1 over 48 and a bit rate of 200 megabits, with either the Eterna Film Simulation or F-Log, there's only one thing that's missing for cinema production, lenses, which have now arrived. Now these are Fuji's first two MKX lenses, an 18 to 55 and a 50 to 135. These lenses are modeled on professional Fujinon lenses based on the optics in the Cabrio line with X mounts for Fuji's X series of cameras. Now, while more expensive than other X mount lenses, they are a bargain compared to the Cabrio lenses. And on these APS-C cameras, they provide an effective field of view of 76 to 29 degrees on the 18 to 55, and 32 to 12 degrees on the 50 to 135. In 35 millimeter terms, that's equivalent to 27 to 84 millimeters and 76 to 206 millimeters. Now, each includes a tripod mounting foot and a lens hood. And today we're recording on the Fuji X-T2 with the XF 16 to 55, but I'm going to swap lenses so you can see the MKX 18 to 55. And there we go. Now, there are four characteristics that make a lens suitable for video or cinema production. The focus ring has defined travel, which means that it stops at either end of the focus range and the focal distance is marked on the focus ring. Now, this enables the cinematographer or their assistant, the focus puller, to precisely change the focus as required during a shot. Now, when the focus changes from one subject to another during a shot, that's called a rack focus. And this lens can do it predictably, easily, and repeatedly. Now, a cinema lens is parfocal. And this means that once the focus is set for a specific lens, which is typically done by zooming in all the way and then focusing, the focus will not change until the distance between the subject and the lens does while other lenses may breathe while zooming or may have a slightly different focus point from a wide shot to a tight shot, a cinema lens like this does not. And a cinema lens's aperture is marked in T-stops, which, although they are similar to F-stops, measure the amount of light transmitted, not the size of the aperture. And this capability makes it possible to change lenses while shooting a scene without changing the exposure settings or lighting, enabling the editor to cut from a wide shot recorded with one lens to a tight shot recorded with another without a change in exposure between the two shots. And on this lens, there are no defined stops as the aperture is adjusted. It changes seamlessly throughout the aperture range from T2.9 to T22. Now this makes it possible not only to make silent adjustments, but also to make them subtly and imperceptibly. Both of these lenses open to T2.9 and have a constant aperture. It doesn't close when the focal length changes. Now finally, there's no external movement as adjustments to focus and zoom are made. All the action is internal, which means the lens doesn't move. And when it's mounted on a rig with a matte box, that's an important characteristic. On Fuji's MKX lenses, all three controls, aperture, focus, and zoom, are adjusted manually. And there are physical rings to make those adjustments, and each ring has teeth to engage a control wheel, as a professional might use on a rig to make those adjustments. Now, it's worth noting that these two lenses are identical in size, they're slightly over 20 centimeters, and weight, they're slightly over a kilo which makes it possible to exchange them on a camera rig without making other adjustments. They share the same 82 millimeter filter diameter. There are cinema quality lenses with motorized or zoom by wire controls, and many cinema lenses have a switch on the aperture ring to provide stepped controls for greater accuracy. These lenses do not. 
The closest focus distance on the 18 to 55 is 85 centimeters. At 55 millimeters, that looks like this on the chart. For the 50 to 135, it's 120 centimeters, which looks like this at 135 millimeters. Then, using a switch at the back of the lens, there's a macro mode. That releases a back ring, which enables an even closer focus, such as you might use for a golf ball. There is one more ring on this lens to adjust the flange back distance. This may be used for a more accurate setup. And the manual describes how to do this. And Fuji provides the Siemens Star as a downloadable file to adjust this setting. I've left it at the factory default setting. With the X-H1 and the MKX lenses, Fuji makes cinema standard recording affordable to enthusiast filmmakers without sacrificing quality. I do reply to all relevant questions and to civil comments, and I enjoy interacting with you. Now, shoot until your memory card is full and your battery is empty, and please do what makes YouTube creators happy. Subscribe. Thanks. I appreciate that.